Kelly here, special edition of the No Spin News, Friday, June 28th. Stand up for your country. I'm working Fridays. I thought that was behind me, but it's not because of the history that was made last night in the presidential debate in Atlanta. And I was all over the place, way overexposed, uh, TV, radio, you name it. But right now, you are going to witness the best analysis of that debate in the world. I promise. And if I'm overstating it, you let me have it. Bill at BillOReilly.com. All right, let's go. Talking Points Memo. I told you beginning in early March that something big was going to happen to influence the 2024 presidential vote. You remember that. I've said it probably too many times. Well, last night was it. That was it. That was huge. That was the worst presidential debate performance by a candidate in our history. It was pathetic. It was depressing because this man is in charge of all of us. And it is dangerous. He should not be in that position. And there is no doubt about it anymore. Let me prove my case. So we begin with the two men entering the debate arena. They hate each other. No eye contact, no handshake. No handshake at the end. They despise each other personally, big time. Trump looked a little tired, okay, but he didn't look bad, and they were shooting him tight, which means you saw close-ups of him. You didn't notice this, but I did. They very rarely, CNN, shot Biden tight. Biden was very pale. His voice was raspy, and when he started to decline in the debate, very quickly, There was something put out that he had a cold, but that did not stop him from going to the Waffle House after the debate. But he did not look good. Okay. The moderators, Dana Bash and Jake Tapper, were told before the debate, and this is anonymous source, so you don't have to believe it, but I know it's true. They were told by the new CEO of CNN to not allow their liberal ideology to be demonstrated during the debate. They were ordered not to do that. And the reason was that CNN is so in so much desperate trouble. They are now below 500,000 viewers in prime time. Remember, I did 6 million viewers on the two runs at Fox News for the factor. So the debate begins, all right? And in the first minute, the first minute, Biden makes a big verbal mistake. Go. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <clears throat> we brought out in the, the position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. 15,000 new jobs? Of course. He meant 15 million new jobs. Pretty significant mistake. I've made mistakes like that. I've misspoken. But that's a big one. 15,000 new jobs we've created. Come on. And he didn't hear it in his mind to correct himself. When I saw that, I went, going to be a bad night for the President Biden. All right. Then, in 10 minutes into the debate, I want to be very precise here so you follow what I'm following. 10 minutes in, the President of the United States totally collapses. Go. We have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2% in taxes. If they just paid 24%, 24% 
25 percent, either one of those numbers. They've raised $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Incomprehensible. Gibberish. Now, it was painful to watch that for me. I know a lot of people despise Joe Biden. I don't personally. I think he's the second worst president in history. I've said that too many times. I'll back that up in my upcoming book. But I'm I'm sitting there going, this is, remember, everybody in the world's watching this. And he's going, trillionaires, no billionaires, no billion, no million. And then we finally beat Medicare. What does that mean? What does that mean? And he's throwing out stats that are absolutely false. But they both did that. Okay. But you go, Uh Uh-oh. And I knew then that Joe Biden is finished. He is not going to be on the ballot in November, I predict. And if he is, it's going to be a landslide for Trump. So the Trump people want him to be on the ballot now, after that. Okay. So that was 10 minutes into the debate. But that was just the beginning of the verbal chaos. Go. They had to take out student loans that were ballooning, that if they were engaged in nursing, doctor, and any, anything having to do with volunteerism or investment in America, over million, billions of dollars in private investment in, uh, in, in enterprises that we are growing. We, By the way, we brought off a lot of people, well, uh, the whole idea of computer chips. What I did when, for example, he wants to get away with, get rid of, the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, for the ability to, for the, us to be able to negotiate drug prices with the big pharma companies. Well, guess what? We got it, we got it down to 15, excuse me, $35, and I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we can do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Now, Trump was fairly gentle about uh, the verbal gaffes uh, last night. He was restrained, Donald Trump. Uh, and, and that was a good strategy for him, because this is like, you know, somebody down on the ground getting kicked. And uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's. All right. It's tragic. That's what it is. Now, Biden had maybe two or three good moments in 90 minutes. Here was his strongest moment. Go. He sat there for three hours, three hours watching, begging, being begged by his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about these people being patriots and, and, and great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. So obviously talking about January 6th, Trump really didn't have a meaningful reply to that other to blame Nancy Pelosi for failing to call a National Guard, which is true. Pelosi even admitted that, and we, we extensively reported on that. But that, that was a high point for Biden, saying that Trump didn't do anything three hours. That's true. That's true. Okay. Now, on the Trump side, his strongest moment was pounding Joe Biden over the southern border. Roll it. And because of his ridiculous, insane and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we're literally 
an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. That was devastating. And remember, he could have been worse if Trump had said the president of the United States has not called any of the victims of the migrant crime, which he hasn't. We went over Lake and Riley. We went over all of that. Just today, a young girl in Syracuse, New York, was murdered. Migrants charged with it. So Biden then is in a spot, right? He needs to rise up. Because that's the most emotional thing about the whole debate, is the violence stemming from the open border. I want you to listen to this soundbite very, very carefully. This is the worst statement I have ever heard or read in all of my research on the presidents. The worst statement by a president of the United States. Roll it. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, to, they talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women who are being raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. By, oh, just, it's, it's just ridiculous. Are you kidding I really don't know what to say. There's a lot of women, young women being raped by their in-laws, spouses, brothers and sisters. Does a rational human being say that? No. It's not about cognitive decline anymore. It's about rationality. That man, Joe Biden, does not know what he is saying or doing, in my opinion. That was frightening. Then he said this, go. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers. Significantly, by the way, the border patrol endorsed me, endorsed my position. Well, at 933, the border patrol union issued this statement on X, quote, to be clear, we have never and never will endorse Biden. Now, all the liberal papers and everything like that, Trump's lies, Trump's lies, Trump's lies. Okay, you saw it, you heard it. Flat out, there's Joe. Now, I'm not going to do balls and strikes on lies and exaggerations. That's insane. Okay? But when the union in the middle of the debate goes, no, we never endorse them and we never will, it doesn't get any more clear than that. Okay, so... The closing statements, I was going to play you the closing statements, 38 seconds, but I'm not going to do it because they're so pedestrian. They don't mean anything. Usually a closing statement in a debate is like to make you soar. Both Trump and Biden, it was just the same old. OK, so I'm not going to even bother playing it. Let's go to reaction. So one of the most powerful Democrats in the country is David Axelrod. He works for CNN. He was the architect of Barack Obama's victories and the probably closest advisor to Obama even now. Here's what Axelrod said. I think what it says to a lot of people, a lot of active Democrats is, man, we can beat this guy, but I don't know if we can beat him with the press. Guys, guy, we haven't heard from you. You can't beat him with Biden. All right. MSNBC, it was a funeral. OK. Joy Reid, you know, you know MSNBC, okay, you know what that is. Roll the tape. Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this. I have four more years in me. I have the ability uh, and the stamina and the strength to do four more years. He did not do that. He did the opposite of that. He made them more panicked. Incredible statement from a woman who everything's about race, white supremacy, Biden's the greatest. Not anymore, apparently. CNN also, almost a funeral. Go. That was painful. Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh, he, he did not do well at all. But he had a test to meet tonight. 
uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base. And he failed to do that. The only one we could find besides Jill Biden that thought that Joe Biden did well in debate was Governor Gavin Newsom. Go. Well, not on the substance, uh, he won the debate. Uh, I'm old school. Uh, I'm old fashioned. That's what matters to me. (laughs) Now, just keep that in mind, because Newsom is being considered to replace Joe Biden, which would be good for the Republicans and Trump because Newsom has wrecked California. Wrecked it. And for him to say a statement like that, you know what you're getting. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation supports America's greatest heroes, U.S. service members, and first responders who gave their lives, those catastrophically injured in the line of duty, and homeless vets. The Foundation's Gold Star Fallen First Responder and Homeless Vet Programs honor the sacrifices made by men who fought and died for us, and women who risk their lives for our country as well. The Foundation's Never Forget program engages people in 9-11 remembrances across America with more than 80 runs, walks, and dozens of golf outings every year. The Tunnel of Towers 9-11 Institute educates kids from kindergarten through 12th grade about America's darkest day while helping our nation keep its vow to never forget. So please support Tunnel to Towers. Donate $11 a month. Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. That's T, the number two, another T, dot org. All right, let's go to the mail. We've got Javier Baez, Managua, Nicaragua. And I pronounced that correctly. Bill, I'm not a conspiracy guy, but why would Biden's team let him go through the debate? Why were the CNN moderators so good they didn't bail Biden out? Because they couldn't bail Biden out. Couldn't interrupt him. And you couldn't do the, It was a very, very structured. There's what the moderators can do. Here's what the candidates can do. As far as why did they put him up, they thought that after the State of the Union, Javier, where Biden got through it, that he could do the same in a debate with no notes. Pretty insane, right? There you go. Uh, Dan Jermick, Iron River, Michigan. I feel sorry for Biden after watching the debate. I question how his wife and others close to him would even put him in this position. It was sad. Jill Biden should be ashamed. My opinion, Jill Biden wants power. And that's it. Okay, Sharon, I admit I'm shocked that CNN did a fairly decent job moderating debate. They did manage to keep both candidates on topic most of the time. But President Trump had to rebut. Joe as needed. But they didn't keep the candidate, Sharon, on topic. Candidates had had what they want. There was no holding them accountable for that. And um, that's just the way it was. James Milner, Keswick, Virginia. The debates are what I thought they would be. They didn't tell us what they were going to do for our country. I would have liked more specificity, and that's what I'm recommending that Donald Trump do going forward. Joe Biden, why? He's wrecked it up. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, what else he could have said. Bruce T- Taves, Winnipeg, Canada. Did Donald Trump just write up a list of answers he planned to give tonight and decide to read them? To heck with the questions. He took my advice, Bruce. All right. He wanted stuff out there. Trump wanted stuff out there and he got it out there. And Biden could not rebut. Uh, Eric, concierge member. We have a very special concierge program. I'll take you, tell you about in a moment. It wasn't until halfway through the debate that anyone started hearing Joe Biden was sick. I suspect Biden caught his cold a few days ago retroactively during the middle of the debate. Yeah, all right. But he, look, he looked frail. That's all I can say. I don't know if he's sick or not. Uh, Ken, concierge member, enter Michelle Obama as planned. Possible. No indication. Possible. Mark, concierge member, a lot of concierge members here. I wonder what all these Hollywood elites thought about the debate. Just a couple of weeks ago, they shelled out all that money to help Biden. They don't think anything. There's not a lot of thinking going on out there in Hollywood. 
There's a lot of uh, pandering. There's a lot of butt kissing going on. A lot of thinking. Robert uh, Kumza, Saddlebrook, Arizona. Bill, you stated the courts would stop Trump from performing any mass deportations. As a historian, you should know the USA has had mass deportations in our past history. Trump would use these as established precedent to make his case. He can make his case any way he wants. And Eisenhower had a mass um, um, migration out, but it's a different age, different time. You want to deport somebody now? They have to get due process. 11 million due process, Cates? There you go. Okay. Here is the best offer we have ever made to uh, convince you that concierge membership to BillOReilly.com will enhance your life. So if you sign up or re-up or upgrade from premium membership, you get Not Woke Mug Free and any of my books, including the upcoming Let's See the Cover, Confronting the Presidents. I was asked, I did interviews for the last 48 hours all over the place. Everybody who's read this book says the same thing. Can't put it down. Unbelievable information. It is out September 10th. Pre-order from us. You'll get it first. This book will mean a lot to you as an American, if you care about your country. All right, we also have a 4th of July special. It's only got a few more days, of course. Buy a not-woke mug and you get a stand up for your country mug for only 10 bucks. Two fabulous mugs, 4th of July special ends in six days. Where the day do not be pedantic. P-E-D-A-N-T-I-C. Bill at BillOReilly.com, Bill at BillOReilly.com. Name in town if you wish to opine from anywhere in the world. And we will be back with a final thought on how the debate directly affects you. By now, you have heard me talk about Delta Rescue. They are a fantastic organization that helps rescue animals from the wilderness. You know, I'm a dog lover. So is Leo Grillo, the founder of Delta Rescue. It is his life's mission to provide everlasting care for these once abandoned animals. I myself have donated to Delta Rescue. Do you believe it is part of man's duty to care for dogs and horses? the animals that so much of our history is tied to? If so, please consider making a donation or consult your advisor about leaving a gift in your will or trust. There can be some tax advantages, and it's a great way to help Delta Rescue accomplish their mission. So please visit DeltaRescue.org to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. This July, as we celebrate the birth of our nation, it's important to reflect on the freedoms our forefathers fought for. Today, these freedoms are under attack, and you know that. Look at the treatment of President Trump and others. If the left can go after a president, all of us are in jeopardy. That's why we need to stick together and fight back. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is more than just a senior discount organization. AMAC is dedicated to protecting our conservative values and defending our rights. Learn more about how AMAC is actively fighting for our freedom by visiting amac.us slash O'Reilly. This July 4th, let's pledge to stand united. Join AMAC today and ensure that our voices are heard. That's amac.us slash O'Reilly. Together, we can make a difference. Here is the final thought of the day. Joe Biden pledges if he is reelected, he will raise the corporate income tax in America from 21 to 28 percent. That means that you, the consumer of products made by corporations and companies, will pay more for everything. It'll be a double dose of inflation because the corporations pass all that tax stuff on to the consumer. This is what progressives want. They want the federal government to tax corporations and wealthy individuals up to here so they can give away money to people who are not as affluent to buy their votes. That's what it's about. The progressive movement 
got murdered last night. Joe Biden is their guy. Never before in this country has a president been so beholden to a group as Biden is to the progressives. If he's out of there, the progressive movement falls apart, which is a good thing for every American, even though many don't know it. That was the most important thing to come out of that debate. The progressive candidate self-destructed. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage here on the No Spin News. Please go to BillOReilly.com over the weekend. we got unbelievable stuff from everywhere on the debate. New column on Sunday. Thank you very much for watching and listening to me, and we will see you on Monday. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.